Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw that this was the equation of a sphere, where the center of the sphere is defined by the coordinates x sub naught, y sub naught, and z sub naught. x, y, and z represent any point on the surface of the sphere, and r is the radius of the sphere. But there's a, another equation, a more general equation, that describes a sphere. Or at least, it could describe a sphere depending upon the values of the constants used. Now, here's the equation. It's x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus some constant times x plus some constant times y plus some constant times z plus another constant equals zero. Now, you may ask yourself the question, how do you know that that's the equation of a sphere? Well, we're going to show you this with an example in just a moment. However, it's not always the equation of a sphere. Again, it depends on the values of g, h, i, and j, the four constants in the equation. So this is how that works. So here we have an equation that's in the exact same format. Minus 2 is the value for g, h is minus 4, i is 6, and j is 10. So let's see if that's the equation of a sphere. So what we're going to do here is employ the technique called completing the square. We're going to pair up the variables and write it like this. So we have x squared minus 2x, put that together, and then we have plus a, uh, no, I don't want to go to z yet. I'll take a y squared minus 4y, and then we take a z squared plus 6z, and then we're going to write the 10 on the other side, so that becomes equal to a minus 10. So what we're going to do now is we're going to complete the square of each of these three binomials. So we take half of that and square it and add it. So this becomes x squared minus 2x. Half of two, half of negative 2 is negative 1. Squared becomes plus 1. But since we added a plus 1 on the left side, we're going to have to add a plus 1 on the right side. We do the same over here. So this becomes y squared minus 4y. Again, we take half the middle term, which is a negative 2, square that, that gives us plus 4, so we're going to add a plus 4, which means we must add a plus 4 here as well. And now for the third, here we get z squared plus 6z. Again, take half the middle term, that's 3, square that, that gives us 9, so that's plus 9, and then we have to add a plus 9 here as well. So now you see that we have three trinomials that we can easily factor. So this can be written as x uh, minus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared. And this becomes plus z plus 3 quantity squared is equal to, that would be a 10, a 9, that's 0, that's plus 4. And notice that plus 4 is actually 2 squared. And notice that this looks like it's in the form that we're more familiar with. Again, it'll be x minus the constant of the x-coordinate of the center, y minus the y-coordinate of the center, z minus the z-coordinate of the center, which in this case would be negative 3, and uh, the radius would be 2. So we can then say that the coordinates, the center, can be located as follows. Center will be equal at 1, 2 and negative 3, and the radius is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So you can see that, yes indeed, that was the equation of a circle. Now, be careful. It's only equation of a circle because the constant on the right side was greater than 0. So if, if the constant, so let's call this the constant on the right side, if the constant is greater than zero, then we have an equation of a circle. But if the constant is equal to zero, if that is now equal to zero, that means that each of these must be set equal to zero, which means that that will then give us a location exactly at a point, because for this to be equal to zero, x, y, and z could only have one specific combination of values. So that means that now we have an equation of a single point. And finally, if the constant on the right side of that equation is less than zero, then we have no graph, meaning there's nothing there that it can represent, at least not in the real world, in the imaginary world, yes, 
But in the real world, no. So we have what we would call an imaginary sphere, perhaps, but not a real sphere. So yes, it's a, if the constant is greater than zero, we have, and I shouldn't write it as a circle, really, because we're in three-dimensional space. It's actually a sphere. There we go. So if the constant is greater than zero, we have a sphere. If it's constant equal to zero, we have a single point in three-dimensional space. And if the constant is less than zero, there's no graph at all. It doesn't represent anything in the real world. And that's how it's done.